So our next speaker is uh, Gareth Kitchen from Manchester. He's an MRC Clinical Research Training Fellow, and his title is BMAL1 Alters Susceptibility to Pneumonia Through Regulation of Macrophage Phagocytosis. Gareth, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I have discovered a novel regulator um, of outcome on susceptibility to pneumonia, BMAL1. This is important because pneumonia has, is responsible for 5% of all-cause mortality. Now, the circadian clock um, regulates physiology and immunity, and its master clock is located in the suprachiasmatic in the nucleus. Um, it responds to the environment and entrains the peripheral clocks that are present in just about every other cell of the body. The core molecular clock is a transcription translation feedback loop with BMAL at its heart, and it causes circadian oscillation of outputs. Deletion of BMAL stops the circadian oscillation of outputs, and I've used BMAL deletion in macrophages as a model of circadian disruption. And it was my original hypothesis that circadian disruption in macrophages would lead to a worsening in outcome after pneumonia. So I gave mice that had conditional knockout of BMAL in their macrophages pneumonia, as well as litimate controls. But here you can see a highly paradoxical observation, and these are colony forming unit plots, um, that there's significantly reduced bacteremia um, in knockout mice with no BMAL in their macrophages compared to litimate controls. I've therefore identified the cell type as the macrophage and BMAL as the protein, but I wanted to see if the function of these cells were different. So I looked at phagocytosis, both in vivo and ex vivo, and you can see the increased fluorescence which shows increased uptake of fluorescently labelled bacteria in BMAL deleted cells compared to litimate controls. The same occurs ex vivo. And then, then further done um, live cell microscopy with fluorescent uptake, and you can see here the knockout macrophages take up um, more, swell more bacteria than the litimate controls. Um, so next I analyse macrophages under basal conditions um, and following 30 minute stimulation with bacteria. And you can see um, from phosphoproteomic analysis, there's 71 differences under basal conditions. And these differences disappear following stimulation with bacteria. This suggests that the macrophages with BMAL deletion um, are in a pre-activated state. The most common pathway that these phosphocytes belong to was the actin cytoskeleton. So I therefore imaged macrophages using super-resolution confocal microscopy and F-actin staining. And you can see in the wild types, the cells are stretched and elongated with stress fibers visualized. But in the BMAL deleted macrophages, they're more rounder in structure with less stress fibers, strongly suggestive of an activated macrophage. So ROE is an important protein um, known to regulate the actin cytoskeleton and also be important in phagocytosis. And there's no difference in total levels of ROE, wild type versus knockout. Um, but the active um, form of ROE, or GTP ROE, is highly upregulated um, in BMAL deleted macrophages. The quantification of this is shown to the right. So, to establish the causal link between my um, BMAL deleted increased phagocytosis phenotype and the increased levels of active ROA, I, I used a ROA inhibitor experiment at, in, in, the cons, cons, uh, in the situation of a phagocytosis assay. And here, at the zero dose of ROA inhibitor, you can see the persistence of the phenomenon with increased uptake of fluorescent labeled bacteria compared to controls. But at the lowest level of ROA inhibitor, the level of phagocytosis in the knockouts is brought down to the level of the controls. So BMAL1 is causing increased phagocytosis. Removal of BMAL1 is causing an increase of phagocytosis. So in conclusion, I can say that the clock protein BMAL is regulating phag phagocytosis and providing an antibacterial protective effect. ROE is the pivotal effect of protein, which leads to the improvement of phagocytosis through the altered macrophage character skeleton. And in an environment where increasing antibiotic resistance is one of the biggest challenges to modern medicine, this is a potential target for future therapies. It also suggests that circadian disruption is not always a bad thing, and it might be that patients in acute settings, such as on intensive care with sepsis or pneumonia, have a protective effect from the acute circadian disruption that's occurring, occurring during that illness. Um, I'm very grateful to my sponsors, the MRC, and the Brogan Award for tra my travel here today, and for the supervisors um, and collaborators in Manchester. Thank you very much. Well done, Gareth. Questions? John? So Lysem's not a great promoter for targeting macrophages, as I'm sure you know. So what was the efficiency of knockout in your, uh, in your hands? Um, so in, in the um, 
in, so I used two drivers. So the first experiment was done in Lysem, the second was done in CX3 CR1. Both of those experiments, FINA copied. Um, Western blot for alveolar macrophages, which is the key effect to target. Um, I've not got the Western blot there, but showed very good knockdown of BMAL in alveolar macrophages, the key cell type. Edwin? I mean, it's a similar sort of question, but you're going to get a pan myeloid knocked out with an Izem Cree. And so, you know, you've got to be absolutely certain that you haven't got any neutrophil contamination or component in your experiments. Did you do that? And, and I used, I, most of my experiments I repeated with the CX3 CR1 driver and they phenocopied. So that was my way of de removing the, um, the neutrophil component of the difference in phagocytosis. I also did separate phagocytosis assays in neutrophils from the lysem mice and there was no difference in neutrophil phagocytosis. I was using a negative selection technique for neutrophil from bone marrow derived my, uh, neutrophil. My, uh, and, and, and can I ask, I think it's your group that have shown very striking differences in the LPS response in lungs, depending on what time of day you do the challenge. Correct. So did you, did you, which, when did you do your infection challenges? So I did them at ZT0, um, sorry, ZT, yeah, ZT12, which was previously shown to be the peak um, of, of response, so when the bacterial burden was lowest. But yes, I, 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 I can see that it would be useful to do these a full circadian time course, four different time points, and that may be well, well be something that I do. Okay, any more questions? One more here, yep. Sorry, Sorry just hang on. Uh, would you be able to follow up? Because presumably clinically, a circadian rhythm is dynamic and it changes, and these might not be sustained consequences. It may even be deleterious to the immune function over a period of follow-up. Yes, I mean, my, one of my next clinical stages is to look at patients on intensive care in the acute setting and the patients that are there for a long time for single organ respiratory support, and I'm ass assessing their, um, their circadian disruption, and then I'll be looking at downstream markers to see if the mechanisms seen here are conserved. Fascinating stuff. Can I ask a quick question? Yep. Did you find that BMAL knockdown obviously impacted on effector function, but did it change macrophage phenotype? Yeah, um, so I've got another couple of slides here. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, you've, got, you've skipped through my presentation. It did. So it, it affected morphology, it affected their ability to move, it affected their um, ability to use energy, so it increased gly glycolytic capacity. Okay, thank you. Great. I think we'll probably have to move on, but thanks very much, Gareth. Thank you. Thank you.